You know what, let's cut out all of the warm, fuzzy, self-help talk, and I'm gonna be the first person to speak to you frankly today. I'm gonna tell you the four reasons why you're poor, and reason number one is because you saw this title and it triggered you. You've listened to the first 10 or 20 seconds of this YouTube video, and it's instantly triggered you, and that says far more about you than anything else. The first reason you're poor is because you can't look yourself in the mirror and be honest about your current situation. You can't take criticism without even trying to protect your ego. You know, usually there's two things that most people can't take responsibility for. It's number one, how much money they have in their bank account, and number two, their weight. And let me tell you something right now, if you're watching this video, it means that you have Wi-Fi as well as some sort of device that connects you to the global economy. So for that reason, you have no excuses, zero, none. In the year 2022, if you still can't figure out how to make money, shame on you. Now, let me make a very, very important caveat because there's a lot of people I know who don't make much money and they're genuinely happy. They love their situation, they love their life, and I can see it in their eyes. You know, you can you can tell a lot when you actually look someone in the eyes. The eyes, Chico. And you can tell, are they saying this just to cope with their situation or do they truly mean what they say? And they're like, yeah, like I make more than enough money. I feel like I'm happy with my life. And to those people, I salute you. And I don't believe it's in everyone's destiny to become a multimillionaire. But if you're watching this video right now, it tells me everything I need to know, which is you are not happy with your financial situation. You know, as I said, I am never bothered by a fat person who looks himself in the mirror and they're like, yeah, you know what? I get it. You know, maybe I could lose a little bit of weight. Maybe I could lower my body fat percentage, but I'm fine with where I am. You know, my issue is when I see fat people explaining a 101 different reasons why no, no, you don't understand it's my metabolism or it's this thing or there's this special reason why I'm different compared to everyone else out there. And I know these people live a very sad existence because they have to look themselves in the mirror every single night and be okay with the fact that they lie to themselves. The most important on earth, they lie to themselves and everyone has their flaws. I'll give you a perfect example all the time. I drink, I enjoy a drink. You know, sometimes I don't drink for a few weeks. Sometimes I drink every single day in a week, especially when I'm abroad traveling with friends. It is not good for me. No one is going to try to pretend that drinking alcohol is good for me. Well, at least when I'm drinking, I'm not there making 101 excuses why I can't stop or why actually, you know, what? maybe drinking is actually kind of good for you. Like, no, I just say, hey, I'm drinking. I know it's bad for me. I accept that it's bad for me. And in this situation, I have decided that the pros outweigh the cons, but I've made this decision to drink on this particular day and I'm okay with it. That is me being able to unemotionally assess my situation. I've had many friends go, hey, I think you shouldn't smoke cigars. They're not good for you. And I'm like, I understand there's health implications, but it's one of those things that just I'm going to keep doing. But the point is when someone gives me that sort of criticism or constructive criticism, I can look at things objectively and I can assess the situation without getting triggered, without feeling a person's attacking me, without feeling that I'm a fundamentally a bad person or I'm flawed. Just look at things critically. So the first reason you're poor is because you cannot look at your life critically without your little ego getting shattered and without feeling like you have to make 101 different excuses for the reason you're in the situation you're in right now. Now, speaking of identity, identity is kind of a funny thing in 2022 because I feel as though in the world right now, everyone kind of accepts you can change your identity and you can shift your identity. You know, you could be a fan of one sport and then the next year, you know, start getting a keen interest in another sport. And then now you identify as a fan of that sport. You could be very into street style and identify as someone who dresses a little edgier. And then the next year, you change your identity to someone who dresses a little bit more on the classic side. I mean, look, we're even in a situation where some people wake up on a Tuesday without changing anything about their physical appearance and decide, you know what? I am now the opposite gender. I've done nothing to my body, but I just identify as the opposite gender now. So let's get this straight. I can wake up tomorrow and I can identify as a girl, change nothing about me. And the woke liberals will give me a round of applause and go, go, you go, you know, empowerment. But if I told someone, hey, you can wake up tomorrow and stop identifying as poor, start identifying as rich, they would crucify me. <laughs> so I said, let's really unpack that. The modern world believes that, you know, your gender, that's an identity and you can just wake up and, and change that. But your financial situation, you know, that's not, you don't identify as poor. All those people who, who have no money, they don't identify as poor. How dare you? It's just a very funny world we live in, huh? You need to understand that your financial situation is a hundred percent an identity. Now, bear in mind, 200 years ago, I would not have said the same thing. I mean, really ever since 1840 or something like that, when the Bible actually got translated from Latin into English, you know, basically ever since like the last 500 ish years, information has started becoming democratized. You know, people can pick up books and they can start reading. But the point is even let's say a hundred years ago, it wasn't the way it is now. The way it is now, literally everyone watching this can log online and get the same information that someone else used to go on to make a million dollars, $10 million, 
hundred million dollars, they have access to that exact same information, yet they are stuck in the same place. So you must ask yourself why. And that is because you 100% identify as someone who is poor. It is lodged very, very, very deep in your subconscious mind. And by the way, I know what that's like. My first ever tattoo right here that I got at the age of 16. It says my cup runneth over, which means I have more than I need. The reason I got that was because my mom growing up, she also used to tell me, take as much as you can because you never know when you're going to get any more. That is the programming of someone who is poor. And I love my mother to bits. She's the reason I started my business. She's the only reason I worked as hard as I did to get us out of our financial situation. But until I got this tattoo on me, until I got a reminder that I have more than I need, I am abundant. You know, it's funny. I got this tattoo literally maybe two months before my agency really started to take off. And I was basically able to drop out of school, support me and my mom. So you need to understand that a lot of these things that are in your subconscious mind can be programming from your parents. You know, you could have been grown up being taught that money is the root of all evil. People who cheat and lie are the ones who get money, whatever it is. And by the way, whoever taught you that stuff, a lot of times it can be a defense mechanism for them. My mother was the youngest of seven children in the Soviet Union. So when she said, take as much as you can, because you never know when you're going to get any more, you need to understand growing up in the 80s and early 90s in the Soviet Union era, that is a true statement. So you learn and you get programmed with these things from a young age. And then unfortunately, it becomes this cancerous thought for the rest of your life. So just like the first point, you should be able to look at your situation and unemotionally evaluate that you are not where you want to be financially, yet you should still be able to wake up the next morning and instantly identify as rich, instantly identify and embody the characters and the mindset and the trait of the version of you that is financially abundant. When you change your identity, you change your life. One of the big issues why people do not change their identity or their money beliefs is because they believe that money is scarce when quite frankly, it's not. When you believe money is scarce, you try to hoard it. And the issue is when you try to pull something in by force, it just pushes it away. Instead of trying to pull in money by force, instead, you must attract it. You've been taught your entire life, you know, money is this very scarce item, so you have to be very careful around it and all this stuff when unequivocally that's not true. All you need to do is look at the money printing they've been doing the past couple of years. And by the way, past few years have been exaggerated. It's still been going on for a hundred years now. You know, I say this all the time, but look at the inception of the Federal Reserve. You know, understand where does money come from? That hundred dollar bill that you're holding, who created that? Was it the government? Because it wasn't the government, but look into it. So we live in this world where you've got private investors that own the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve then gets to print money that the government borrows. And then the best part is a lot of that flows to the banks. So you've got this funny money that's backed by nothing. And the best part is then it gets sent to the banks where they use something called fractional reserve banking, which means they only need to hold a reserve. A tiny fraction of those funds need to be held in reserve. So then they can take that funny money and multiply it many, many times over. The reason I say all this to you is to prove that money is not scarce because they print it and it's backed by nothing. It's valueless. Only value is is the perception, the mental perception that you've put around it. So when you start to realize the world's monetary system as we know it, then it becomes very easy to understand that money is not scarce. Money is abundant and they have proven that it's infinite. So what you need to do is hate the game or play the game, make a bunch of this money, this fake fiat currency, and then go put it into tangible real assets. You know, if you look at it, quite frankly, the world's monetary system is kind of like imagine a parallel universe and all of the elites and leaders in the parallel universe collected all the sand in the world. And the sand is backed by nothing. You can't really do anything with the sand. The sand doesn't have too much use, but they convinced all of the little peasants that one little grain of sand is worth a lot. And the entire economy ran on these little grains of sand, even though they're kind of useless, you can't really do much with them. All it is, is just the belief that that little grain of sand is worth something or can buy you something. But what happens when the curtain falls? Falls, the show is over and people realize the sand is worthless. They've been lied to this entire time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's financial system in the next 5, 10, 15 years, which is why if you know how to do things right over the next decade or so, you can collect all of this funny money and then buy real tangible things with it, things that have actual value to them. So that's the next reason you're poor is because you have not educated yourself on what is money, where has it come from, the monetary system as we know it. And unfortunately, the byproduct to that is you have this anxiety about money. You think that money is scarce when quite frankly, it's not. Now in this world, there are the people who create and those that consume and the people who consume things pay the ones and make the ones who create things very rich. So you need to understand that you are always paying someone in one of two currencies, attention or money. And ultimately attention and money both usually end up to the person who has managed to get that from you, eventually making money in some form or fashion. You need to understand that you are poor because you do not create anything. You simply consume and you will not become rich in life until you create something that the market consumes 
platforms, whether that be a service, whether that be a product, whatever it may be, create value and others will consume it in return for money. You know, and this also goes for sort of your online footprint, this idea of creator versus consumer. You need to understand that you are consumers on YouTube, you are consumers on TikTok. And by the way, there's no issues with that. Bear in mind, when I have 10 or 15 minutes to eat a nice meal, I usually sit down and I watch a YouTube video. So there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But the issue is most of you guys are spending three, four hours a day on TikTok over consuming. So if it is applicable to your goals, you know, for some of you watching this, you may not actually want to be entrepreneurs. I know some of you watching this, you know, you work in great jobs and you know, having a social media presence and creating online doesn't really, you know, contribute to you working up through the company and eventually becoming, let's say the COO or the CMO at your company. So if that's the case, delete all of these stupid apps off your phone, delete Instagram, delete TikTok. They have zero use to you. But if it's applicable to what you want to do in life, then start creating alongside consuming. So just remember the last reason that you are poor is because you are way too far into the consumer field rather than being a creator, either digitally or in terms of what you're actually creating with products or services. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to end off this video by saying that I love you guys. And you know, I will be intense with you sometimes because I have noticed like on YouTube, it, sometimes it just does feel like a little too airy fairy like all these podcasts and all these like YouTube channels. They just want to make you feel better. I just want to talk to you guys, frankly. Now, this video was good and I want to light a fire inside you. But now you need to actually lock in this knowledge by watching the seven millionaire skills I learned at the age of 18. These two videos together, you'll be unstoppable. Love you guys. Catch you next time.